Cheryl Jackson is learning how to make money in Iraq. She's a vice president with AAR, an aerospace company in Chicago. The company wants to repair and maintain fleets of aircraft and handle transport airlift services in Iraq. The Middle East in general is an important emerging market and uh, having a footprint there. Going there with partners, you know, joint venturing with businesses that exist there is important. The U.S. Chamber of Commerce has invited American business leaders to hear about investment opportunities from Sami El Adiji, chairman of the Iraqi National Investment Commission. He says a new investment law in Iraq will open up the country to foreign business. We are in direct link with the Council of Ministers and with the Prime Minister himself. So any problem that we have, we directly to the executive branch and also to the legislative branch. al Adiji tells the group about plans to build a million houses, as well as to convert government-run companies to private shareholders. Is there a process in place for matching um, and identifying partners? Yes. Iraqi Ambassador Samir Sumadai says the time is right to invest in Iraq. There's a lot of money to be, make, to be made. There are many companies who are making money in Iraq right now. But Iraq is still not a peaceful country. Even though the United States ended its combat mission there in August and now only advises and assists Iraqi forces. Sectarian violence is common. Many roads and bridges are in disrepair. Electricity is unreliable. A World Bank survey rates Iraq as the worst place in the Middle East for ease of doing business and 166th out of all 183 countries worldwide. The country's in a mess and it has been in a mess for a number of years. Robert Evil writes about energy and national security in Iraq. He says corruption and lack of infrastructure make it difficult to do business there. I look at it as a long-term investment, but I would go in very slowly, do my homework, and be ready to leave, you know, if the situation looked like it wasn't going to play out. But for now, AAR Vice President Cheryl Jackson and a colleague have arranged a private meeting with El Araji to discuss possibilities. He encourages them. Then, Jackson meets with her CEO over lunch to inform him what she's learned. Hi, Dr. Sammy. Very nice to meet Thank you. The next step is for AAR to formally submit their plans in writing. Then, early next year, Jackson and others will fly to Iraq to meet with leaders of the government and some in the private sector. Carolyn Persuti, VOA News.